Assalamu alaikum my dear students this is the part 1 of iupac nomenclature of organic compounds in which i will be telling you how to name acyclic alkenes according to the new iupac rules you know what acyclic alkenes mean those saturated organic compounds that do not have any rings in it or any other functional groups so let's begin bismillahir rahmanir rahim first thing first how to name a chain of specific number of carbons it could be the parent carbon chain or branch if it is the parent chain it will have the suffix ain at the end of the name for example pentane however if it is a branch then it will have suffix yl at the end of the name for example pentyl this table shows you the names of chains with number of carbon atoms from 1 to 10 if there is only one carbon atom then it is meth if it is a parent chain it will be called as methane and if it is a branch it will be called as methyl if there are two carbons then it will be called as eth and if it is the parent chain that will be called ethane and if it is branch it will be called as ethyl for carbon 3 we use the term prop for carbon 4 it is but for carbon 5 it is pent for carbon 6 hex for 7 hept for 8 oct for 9 non and for 10 we use the term dec if it is the parent chain it will be called decane 11 carbon chain is called undecane 12 carbon chain will be called dudecane then tridecane tetradecane pentadecane hexadecane heptadecane octadecane nonadecane and a carbon chain of 20 carbons will be called icosane after 20 the prefix used for one is hane and numbers from 2 to 9 are the same you saw in 12 to 19 that is do for 2 tri for 3 tetra for 4 penta for 5 and so on according to this rule 21 will be called as hane icosane 22 will be called do icosane or do cosane in short the ei is mostly dropped when you write the name do cosane and then we have tri icosane or in short you can call it tri cosane and then tetra cosane penta cosane hexa cosane and so on 30 will be called as tri acontane after this acontane will be used as our suffix after every 10 numbers for example for 40 we will use tetra acontane tetra for 4 and the acontane is the suffix used for these numbers for 50 we use penta acontane for 60 we use hexa acontane then hepta acontane octa acontane non acontane and so on remember to use the prefix hen do try and tetra etc before the names of 40 50 and 60 etc for example 31 will be called as hen try acontane in which hen is used for 1 and try acontane is used for 30 so hen try acontane 30 1 for 32 you will have to use do try acontane do means 2 and try acontane is used for 30 and then for 33 try try acontane similarly 42 will be called as do tetra acontane do for 2 and tetra acontane is used for 40 43 will be called as try tetra contain 44 will be called as tetra tetra contain and so on what about 98 it is called octa nona contain and 99 is called as nona nona contain so what about 100 100 is called hecta and if it is parent chain it will be called as hectane and if it is the branch chain then it will be called hectyl for 200 the word use is dictane for 300 it is tectane for 400 tetractane for 500 pentactane and hexactane heptactane octactane and then nonactane okay what about 1000 carbons for that the name kilian is used for 1000 carbon parent chain for 2000 carbon parent chain the word dilian is used for 3000 carbons we use trilians and then tetralians pentalians hexalians heptalians octalians and nonalians this table shows you the method of how to name something like 25 for example you have to combine prefix for 5 from this column with the suffix for 20 from this column so the compound will be pentacosane for 
the EI from icosine is mostly dropped. What about 36? For 36, combine the prefix for 6 from this column, that is hexa, and the suffix for 30 from this column, that is triacontane. So 36 will be called as hexa triacontane, and 37 will be called as hepta triacontane. What about 48, for example? For 48, you will have to combine names for 8 and 40. That is octa tetra contain. What about numbers above 100? For example, 101. Again, you have to combine a prefix from this column with the suffix of hectane that is used for 100. For 101, you will have to combine hen with hectane. So it will become hen hectane. For 102, you will use do hectane. 103 will be called as trihectane, 104 will be called as tetrahectane, and 113 will be called as tridecahectane. It means you will have to take one name from the first column and the other name from the second column. Now let's learn the rules for naming the acyclic alkenes, that is saturated non-cyclic compounds. For example, this is a given compound. The first rule over here is to select the longest chain, that is the parent chain. How will you find the longest chain? Before finding the longest chain, first let me tell you how to count the maximum number of possible chains in a given compound. How many chains are there in this molecule? There are two ways to count the number of chains. The first way is to manually counting them. First count the number of ends in this molecule. So, the number of ends in this molecule are 1, 2, 3, and 4. So, there are a total of 4 end points in this compound. You have to connect each of the end with each other end. So, you have to count number of chains starting from each of these 3 ends excluding the last ending that is the fourth one. First, let's start from this end. Chain 1 chain 2 and chain 3. Now count the number of chain starting from this end. Chain number 4, chain number 5. Now let's start from this end. Chain number 6. So this was the last chain and there are no chains left to count from this last end. So how many chains are there in this compound? There are a total of 6 chains in this molecule. Now let's find the total number of chains in this molecule using a formula. This is the formula for this purpose. Here n stands for the number of endpoints which is 4 here. Put the value of n in this formula. So 4 minus 1 is 3 and 4 divided by 2 becomes 2. Now multiply these two numbers. So 3 twoza becomes 6. So both the methods can be used to find the number of chains in an organic compound. So let's come back to the rules. The first rule says to select the longest chain. To select the longest chain, we have to count the number of carbons in each of those six chains that we counted in the last slide. So let's count the number of carbons in each chain. There are two methods at this time in my mind that I can use to count the number of atoms in each of these chains. The first method is the complete method and the second method is visually eliminating the shortest branches. The first method is the most straightforward method and no logic is involved in it. You just have to count the number of carbons in each of the chains and then consider the chain that contains the maximum number of carbons in it as your parent chain. Then there is second method which is to usually eliminating the shortest branches one by one. First exclude this shortest chain which usually seems the shortest one. It contains only two carbons. Then the second shortest branch is this one which even with a bird eye view you can find among all the chains. The chain has three carbons so eliminate this branch as well. So in this way we are left with the longest chain with us which will be our parent chain. So only this chain left with us and this is our parent chain. Now count the number of carbons in this longest chain. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, and 18. Hence our parent chain name will be octadecane. 
and the rest of the carbons will be considered as substituent branches. So we have two branches attached to this parent chain, one with two carbons and another with three carbons. What if you have a complex compound like this one? You can apply elimination method over here as well. So let's apply the elimination method to this complex compound. If you want to apply the complete method of counting number of carbons in each chain in this compound, that will be very time consuming and chances of error are also more. Here the elimination method will be most useful. So let's start. First, let's eliminate the visually shortest branches. Let's first scan the whole compound for visually the shortest chains. Visually, this branch is the shortest and you can see it has only one carbon in it. You can see that the other branches are much, much longer than this one. So this branch cannot be the part of the parent chain. So let's eliminate it. Now scan the structure again. You will see more short chains. For example, this chain, this second chain, this third branch and this fourth branch. All of these four branches have only two carbons in them, which are the shortest branches among all other branches. And you can easily find them visually scanning the whole compound. So let's eliminate these branches as well. This one, this one, two carbons here and two carbons here. Now scan the whole compound again and find the shortest chains, which visually seems to be the shortest ones. To me, these four branches seem to be the shortest ones. First compare this branch with this one. As you can see that these two chains seem to be similar in length. But if you come here, this is not branch point. Actually, the branch point is here. So this chain is actually longer than this one. So this is the shorter chain as compared to this one. So we can eliminate this chain as well. Because if you see, this chain is shorter than all other chains. So let's eliminate it. Now let's come to these two branches. Same is the case over here as well as we saw here. This one is shorter as compared to this one. So we can eliminate this chain over here as well. Okay, now let's scan the compound again. Now it is becoming more and more difficult to find the shortest chain with just scanning the molecule with eyes. But again, uh, to me, there is a chain that I can see uh, which is comparably smaller than the other chains. This chain seems to be the smallest among all these five branches. As you can see, it is easily visible to your eyes that it will be the shortest chain among all these chains. So let's eliminate this chain as well. Now it has become further difficult. From this point onward, you will have to count the numbers in chains. As you can see, this chain is the longest chain among all these four branches. So we do not need to exclude this chain from the parent name. There is a competition between these three branches. So let's count the number of carbons in each of these. This chain has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight carbons in it. What about this one? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So we cannot eliminate this chain because it is longer than this one. And what about this one? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So it's easy. We can eliminate this as well as this chain. So let's eliminate them. This one and then this one. And now we are left with the longest carbon chain, which will be our parent chain. Now let's count the number of carbons in this parent chain. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21 and 22. So it contains 22 carbons. What will be the name of this chain? From the tables I showed you in the last slides, the name for 22 carbon chain is docosane. What if two chains have same length? Then the second rule says to select the chain with maximum number of substituents. For example, this compound has two chains with same length. This is chain 1 and this is chain 2. Both of these chains have 18 carbons in them. So they are similar in number of carbon atoms. Now let's count the number of substituents attached to each of these two chains. First, let's count the substituents in the red underlined chain. 1, 2, 3 and 4. So the chain with red underlined has 4 branches. 
Now let's count the branches with green underlined chain. 1 and 2. So it has got only two side branches. If you compare these two chains, the red underlined and the green underlined chain, then comparison is very easy. Because the red underlined chain has four substituents and the green underlined chain has only two substituents. So the preferable parent chain will be the one with more number of substituents. So that is the red underlined chain which has got four substituents on it. And the name of that chain will be octadecane because it has got 18 carbons in it. There could arise another problem. When you have multiple chains with same number of carbon atoms and same number of substituents attached to each of them. For that we have to apply another IUPAC rule. According to that rule you will have to select the chain that has got the lowest set of locants. Here in this compound there are two chains with same length. Both of these chains have got same number of substituents as well. Each of these have four substituents in them. Let's count the number of substituents in both of them. In this straight chain we have substituent number 1, substituent 2, substituent 3 and this substituent number 4. So this chain has got four substituents. Now let's count the number of substituents attached to this chain. This is substituent number 1. This is substituent number 2, this is number 3 and this whole thing as substituent number 4. So both of these chains have got same number of carbon atoms and same number of substituents. So what to do now? Select the chain with lowest set of locants. This is the next IUPIC rule according to which we will have to select the chain with lowest set of locants. Let's apply this rule. First number both the chains from the side nearest to the substituent. That is from this side as well as from this side because this side in this chain is nearest to the substituent and in this chain this side is nearest to the substituent. We do not need to add numbers to these carbons because this branch is common to this chain as well as to this chain. So we have only numbered the carbons from starting till the common point. After that the numbering will be same for both of these chains. So you do not need to apply numbering to the rest of the carbons over here to apply the rule. Now write down the locants for all the substituents on both the chains. According to new rule you have to compare corresponding locants on both the chains one by one. So let's compare them one by one. First compare the first locants. It is two on both the chains. So we cannot decide on this locant. Now let's compare the second locants. So here is the difference. The chain with blue color locants has two at second locant while the chain with green numbers have three over here. Two is less than three. So according to the new rule of IUPAC the decision is made on the difference that appears among the locants. Hence the chain with blue numbers is selected as our parent chain. If no difference in locants and everything is same. Both the chain are same in length, both have got 4-4 four, four substituents, the locants are also the same. So what is the IUPAC rule in this case? The IUPAC rule says that you will have to select the chain that carries the substituent that is alphabetically first. Let's first number the chains. On green numbered chain, bromine is at position number 2, while on blue numbered chain, methyl is at position number 2. So here is the point of difference. One starts with letter B that is bromine and another one starts with letter M that is methyl. So according to this rule we will have to select the chain with bromine because it comes before methyl in alphabetical order. So this will be our parent chain which carries bromine at position number 2. Now the parent chain is selected. Let's come to numbering the chain. According to the rule you have to number the parent chain from both the ends first. From this end that is from right to left and from this end that is from left to right. Now you will have to write the locants from both the ends. Locants from left to right are and locants from right to left are. Compare the locants one by one and then decide on the first difference. Let's compare the first locants. It's three in both of these. No difference again. It's 5 in both side numberings. Here appears the first difference. Left to right numbering has locant 8 while right to left numbering has got 7 at this position. 
As 7 is less than 8, so we select the numbering from right to left shown in red color. So we will have to number the chain from right to left, not from left to right. So this will be considered as our numbering for this chain. If everything is same from both ends, then number the chain from that end which is closer to alphabetically first substituent. The IUPAC rule says to give lowest locant for substituents in order of citation. For example, in this compound, bromine will get lower locant than chlorine. So we will have to number the chain from bromine side. So here is the numbering of the chain from bromine side, where bromine comes at third position and chlorine at tenth position. We cannot number it from chlorine side because chlorine will get position 3 and bromine will get a higher number that is position 10, which is wrong according to the IUPIC rules. What if we have multiple methyl groups or multiple bromine etc. For multiple substituents of the same kind, use di for 2, tri for 3, tetra for 4 and so on. Use the number assigned to the carbon to indicate the position of each substituent. For example, 2,3-dibromo-4,5,6-trichloro. Arrange substituents in alphabetical order. For example, bromo will come before chloro, chloro before ethyl, and ethyl before methyl, and so on. Okay, now everything is set. Now let me tell you how you will write the name of the compound. To name the compound, there are some rules in IUPIC system. First, you write the names of the substituents in alphabetical order. Then the name of the parent chain, for example oct, and at the end you will have to add the suffix "-ain", for alkenes. For example, 3-ethyl, 2-2-dimethyl, 4-propyl octane. If two substituents add same carbon atom, the number is repeated. As you can see over here, 2 is repeated. Di, tri, etc. doesn't come under alphabetical order. For example, in the above example, dimethyl comes after ethyl because it is actually methyl and we know M comes after E of ethyl. You do not take under consideration the D of dimethyl. Instead, you will have to consider M for alphabetical order. Always put a comma between consecutive numbers as you see in the above example. Comma separates two numbers. As you can see here in between these two numbers, there is a comma. Always put a hyphen between number and character or character and a number. As you can see over here, this is number and this is character. So there is a hyphen and also this is character and this is number and there is a hyphen. Merge two consecutive words. For example, here propyl has been merged with octane because these are two words. So this was all for today. Inshallah, in my next video, I will be telling you the new rules for cycloalkanes and complex branched alkanes. Thank you. Allah Hafiz.